I made the last trophy update video exactly 6 months ago. Since then I earned additional 336 trophies, 7 of them being platinum ones and leveled up from level 370 to 381. I would say not great. So let's talk about the games I played and the trophies I earned. If you saw my best trophies of 2021 video, then you already know that I absolutely loved Guardians of the Galaxy. I think that the gameplay is super fun and the Platinum itself is relatively straightforward. The only downside for me were the combat trophies that had too much randomness involved, but they were not too bad by any means. And if you didn't play this game yet, I strongly encourage you to do so. Also, if you are planning on getting the upgraded PS Plus tier, it will be a part of the library. Another game I absolutely loved is It Takes Two and I only I honestly think that it will make it to my best Platinum Trophies of 2022 video. As someone who never really had gamer friends until about 2 years ago, I used to steer clear of co-op games, but luckily that changed in 2020. Despite being familiar with Hazelight Studios before, I was surprised by the amount of fun I had with this game. Every level introduces something unique, so I never felt bored while playing. The Platinum Trophy itself is very easy. The only downside is that you might need to use a guide to mop up collectibles, but because they are mini games, they are definitely worth watching now. For. It's not a secret that I love PlayStation exclusives and they are the main reason I stick with PlayStation as my main platform. And of course, one of the latest and greatest of them is Horizon Forbidden West. I think that the gameplay is better than in a previous game, but I felt like the story was a bit weaker. Since I don't want to get into spoilers, I'll just say that getting the Platinum Trophy was an incredibly enjoyable experience that took me about 70 hours. Worth mentioning is that during that time I never needed to open a guide, which is always a massive plus for me. The only annoying part was the melee combat arenas that were extremely unintuitive and made me literally go to forums to understand what the f*** am I supposed to do? That being said, I would still recommend this game to everyone who enjoyed Horizon Zero Dawn. Sniper Elite V2 has the most accessible trophy list in the franchise and despite initially coming out for PS3, it still holds up surprisingly well. Something to keep in mind, this is the only Sniper Elite game that you need to complete solo to unlock the highest difficulty trophy which I realized way too late, but I still had fun playing it with a friend and consequently replaying it alone. I found the highest difficulty pretty manageable except for a couple of sections that took me a few attempts so I agree with the 5 out of 10 difficulty rating it got on PSN profiles. The hardest part was a miscellaneous trophy that required me to complete a mission without alerting any enemies. There are 13 NPCs on the map and you are forced to take everyone out by using either melee kills or a silenced pistol which is pretty much unusable from a distance. Plus the enemies are hawkeye and the moment one of them sees you throw a crack in the wall or some BS like that, it's over. It took me about 2.5 hours to get through but I definitely enjoyed it overall. As a massive fan of the Uncharted series, I picked up the Legacy of the Thieves collection for the PS5 the moment it was available. The fact that there was only one Platinum Trophy for both Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy did put me off quite a bit and I still think that it was a weird decision, but regardless I completed both of those games for the second time. Like in the PS4 versions, the only part I absolutely hated were the collectibles that required a guide, but other than that this Platinum Trophy is relatively easy and you can even auto pop it if you completed the PS4 games. Some something that I decided not to do. It took me 55 hours to complete everything and I think it was definitely worth it. Sometimes I really enjoy playing easy story driven games and Lake fits perfectly into this category. The game makes you drive around a small town, delivering packages to different people and interacting with them. I'm not going to lie, it probably won't blow your mind with its gameplay and sometimes it lacks polish, like the fact that there is no animation for getting in and out of the car, something that you do all the time and other small things like that which I found very off-putting. But the moment you can look past that, which took me about an hour or so, I actually found myself enjoying the characters and interactions with them, so I ended up liking the game quite a lot. The trophy list has a couple of missable trophies that you will probably get without any trouble, as long as you're aware of them, just something to keep in mind. Luis, Platinum Bro, if you're watching this, I want to make you proud. I finally completed Spider-Man PS4 New Game Plus on the Ultimate Difficulty and by that I attained 100% completion in that game. I found the Ultimate Difficulty to be surprisingly easy and I enjoyed the story a lot more than on my initial playthrough because of two reasons. One, because it was about a year since I last played it and two, because I was able to just focus on the main story which took out a lot of the monotony this game has, like random crimes and bases which I had enough of when I was going for the Platinum. I was considering auto-popping those two trophies for the remastered version as well but decided not to, to have an excuse to replay this game again in a few months. This is how much I loved it. I am currently working on completing Sniper Elite 4 with my friend Martin on Authentic Plus difficulty and oh boy. 
Fun fact, it was added as a DLC and it has a 9 out of 10 difficulty rating on PSN profiles. When we started it felt literally impossible but after going at it for a couple of weeks now we are only one mission away. Everything else is a cakewalk so I am pretty confident that I will be able to complete this game relatively quickly. Edit Aurelia here. So funny story, we literally pulled this off while I was on a break from editing this video. I think it is excellent but if you don't have a reliable partner I would not recommend attempting it. Alright, time for a Q&A. Do you think that depending on the game, games that take very long to platinum, 60 plus hours, need not only some skill to achieve the platinum, but also a good amount of tolerance considering the game can have its BS moments at times? Yeah, I would probably say so. I think there is a good reason why long games, even if they're not particularly hard, do tend to have like lower platinum achievement uh, percentage on PSN profiles. So basically like to take a look at uh, GTA 5, right? GTA 5, I wouldn't consider it like a hard game. I think it's like 2%, something along those lines. Same goes for Red Dead Redemption 2. I, I sometimes even skip games because they are too long. So yeah, I would definitely agree with you here. What would you consider a blind spot in your gaming history? A game or a series or genre you haven't played or tried for one reason or another? I would say probably Mass Effect. I know that this series is amazing, but I just didn't play it for some reason. I even picked up the remastered a few months ago and I still haven't played them. As for genre, I would probably say JRPGs. I just, I don't know, it's just hard for me to get into. I never really played them. My question is, what's the one game you'd love to plot if you had like a three months to play it? Okay, that's an easy one, Wolfenstein New Colossus. This game is basically my white whale, I keep pushing it back because I know the sheer amount of time and effort it will take me to plot it, but I really want to do it eventually. Outside of trophies slash gaming, what gets you really angry? You're a very likable person, so that'd be interesting to know. <laughs> Thank you, first of all. And uh, probably traffic. This is like the, the most annoying part of my daily routine, or at least used to be when before I was working from home, now I actually work from home mostly, so it's not that big of a deal for me at the moment. I have a question, how do you keep your beard so neat? <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, basically, I just uh, trim it every couple of weeks. I use Philips One Blade, not sponsored, but I do really like it. So yeah, I just trim it like three or five millimeters every like three weeks or so, and that's about it. Also, if you could add trophies to one game that doesn't have them already, what would you pick and what would you name the Platinum? I would probably pick Heroes of Might and Magic 3. It didn't even have a console release, I don't think, uh, but this is a game I'm super nostalgic about. I would really love to play it on PlayStation and complete it as well. And I would name the Platinum the savior of Eratia. Other than games, what drives you to put in all the hard work on your videos? Thank you for the hard work, brother. Thanks, Daniel, I appreciate it. To be honest, I never saw myself as a creative person before. I did double with video editing and Photoshop and After Effects a few years ago, before I started my YouTube channel, but I couldn't really stick to it because I didn't see the purpose of doing just random things, you know? And now suddenly I have this purpose, I have this reason to keep making those videos and reasons to improve and reasons to learn. And uh, that's what kind of drives me to continue working on it. The, the fact that people are actually watching and caring. Congrats once again, and I just wanted to ask, out of the 8 mainline Resident Evil games, how many have you got the Platinum? 4 doesn't have a Plat, if you complete it 100%, I would say count it. Okay, so I actually don't have as many as I would want to. I do want to complete all of them eventually, but currently I have a Platinum trophy in Resident Evil 2 Remake, 3 Remake, 7 and Village, so half of the mainline games. Put an image of Alpaca. No. How do you prioritize time for everything with work, life, gaming and YouTube editing? Well, very poorly. <laughs> but if to be a little bit more serious for a second, then probably the fact that I am working for home is very helpful to me here because like I'm not burning the hours of my life on commuting. Also, the big one for me is not pushing myself as hard as I used to. When I started, I was publishing two videos a week and it was hell, like I couldn't keep up and also uh, planning and setting goals for specific days. So basically like today is Thursday and I set myself that I have to finish recording this video by Thursday, no matter what. So now it's Thursday evening and I'm recording this video. Also what really helps is planning and organizing, which basically means that I will do a breakdown of every shot I'll need to take, every footage I'll need to take before I start editing, which really cuts down on editing time. So that really helps. 
Congrats. And my question is, what editing software slash gear do you use? All right, so I use um, Adobe Creative Cloud. So basically Premiere Pro, After Effects and uh, Photoshop. I really like how they work together. They're kind of pricey, but I think they're worth it. Uh, as for the gear, uh, it's gonna be a long answer. My main camera is Fujifilm uh, X-T4 and I have like three different lenses for it. They all have their uses. My backup camera is a Canon 77D, which is pretty decent as well. I think Adam McDermott uses this one as well. I'm pretty sure, maybe I'm mistaken. Also, I have like 360 degree camera, which is kind of nice. It's really new, I just got it recently. I will use it for like a more creative b-roll and um, things like that not sure yet how i'm gonna use it but uh, it could be pretty handy uh, my main mic is a sure sm7b which is probably the most popular among youtubers and streamers it gives really good sound quality so i'm really really happy with it i also have a clip on mic which is pretty decent it's not spectacular but it gets the job done my audio interface device is zoom h8 i picked it up because it's basically portable so i can take it around the house or even outside to record stuff so that's a big plus for me other than that the uh, lighting is obviously very very important so i have like free studio lights i also have two rgb tube lights which i really like other than that the green screen and i think that's about it that's obviously a lot of gear you don't actually need that much gear to start a youtube channel or do high production quality videos i'm just a bit crazy about gear and tech and all the jazz so that's why i have all that which game do you think has the most interesting lore well, I actually have two games in mind. Um, I was thinking Resident Evil because uh, there's a lot of storylines there. There's a lot of lore behind the T-Virus and uh, all that jazz. So this is something I really liked. And another game that comes to mind is actually Control. Control has like a stupid amount of lore inside of it. I never really bothered too much while I was playing, but I did watch a couple of YouTube videos and apparently it's actually very deep and very cool. Although video games movies have been known to be bad, what game or game series would you like to see as a movie or a TV show? I would actually really like to see Detroit Become Human TV series. And I know that it's basically an interactive drama as is, but I really enjoy the philosophical part of this game, which is basically like, what does it mean to be alive? And I would really like to see it on a big or small screen. If you had a choice, what game would you want to be remastered from the ground up? Half-Life 1 and 2. I picked both of them up on Steam very recently and the fact that they are very very dated at the moment did kind of put me off but I still really would love to play them and experience them and if we can get a remake or remaster of them it would be amazing. If you could live the life of a video game character or could live in a video game world for a week, who slash which world would you choose? Firewatch. Not because of the story itself, but because this game is absolutely beautiful and I would love to spend a week without worrying, without phones, without social media and just, you know, just chill, relax. Who's your favorite boosting friend? Oh, that's easy. If you could have any guest on that you haven't already had on, who would it be and why would it be me? <laughs> JK, who would you have on if you could? Well, uh, I have a few people in mind. I would really like to bring Lucy on. Um, I haven't really spoke to her about it yet. I haven't really spoke to her at all, to be fair. Um, who else? Mystic, but that's probably never gonna happen. PewDiePie. Hey, Ilya, I have four questions for you. One, favorite game genre, action adventure. Two, what is a platinum you want to get, but you will never be able to due to it being unobtainable, too difficult, too grindy, etc. Portal 2. This game is freaking amazing. It's super funny. I absolutely love it. I didn't finish it yet. I played it on PC, but just like, I think a couple of hours. I would love to complete it, but unfortunately it's no longer obtainable on PS3. 3. What Platinums make you impressed when you see them on someone's account? I would say probably like games like Wolfenstein 2, Max Payne 3, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, XCOM 2. Basically every game under 1% completion would probably impress me. 4. Obviously your proudest Platinum is Max Payne 3, so my question to you is, do you think you'll ever get a Platinum harder than Max Payne 3? I'd say I would really like that, I'm not sure when I'm gonna go for it, just the, the reason is just I don't have the time currently and most of the games you really need to work for them. Do you think that ultra rare trophies makes your account better? Yes, I do think so. Um, again, like it's obviously individual, it's obviously just my opinion, 
but I do really like seeing ultra rare trophies on someone's account, you know? They just kind of pop up, like even if you have like a lot of easy games, but you also have like a decent amount of ultra rare trophies and hard games, you can still kind of see them. Like I still appreciate those types of accounts as well. So yeah, again, it's just my opinion, obviously, but I do think that ultra rare trophies matter to some extent. Do every game have to have a platinum? I would say no. I don't really like those uh, cash grab games, uh, those five minute plats, because the whole business model is to get money from trophy hunters and I think it's a bit shady. I'm not saying that it's wrong to play those games per se, like if you enjoy it then you know there's nothing wrong with that, but I just think that the business practice is a bit shady. If games on other formats, i.e. consoles and PC, were suddenly put on PlayStation with trophy lists, what games would you instantly get to platinum in? That's easy. Uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted, uh, the 2005 one. This game I'm super nostalgic about, I finished it 3-4 times, it unfortunately never received the PS3 port, it was uh, released on PS2 and Xbox 360 because it came out before PS3 launch. What was your biggest break in trophy hunting? I would say probably three weeks official break, um, it was way back in April, I was on a six month streak and I really burned myself out, so I haven't played video games for like three weeks. But other than that, like currently, to be fair, I am kind of slowed down, not because I don't want to go for trophies, but because I don't have the time. Hey Ilya, where are you from? In one of your videos you mentioned that you were born in Russia, but your PSN profile says that you're from Israel, and perhaps this is where you live now. Uh, so yeah, the, the answer is yes, I was born in Russia, we moved to Israel about 20 years ago, and this is where I currently live. What was your super great plot, but it needed like 100 plus hours? Um, I would say for me it's probably GTA 5. I think the Platinum itself wasn't that terrible, it was a bit grindy towards the end, but the game itself is amazing and I really actually enjoyed it. When are you gonna start a JRPG of any kind? That's a good question. JRPG is one genre that I'm not really into. Not that I think it's bad, obviously it's not, like a lot of people love those games and for good reasons. I'm just not really into them, so I'm not sure when I'm gonna take a deep dive. Let me know in the comments down below how many trophies did you earn in the last 6 months. Thank you for watching.